Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. I'm a past president of the Menopause Society. And today I'm joined by another past president of the Menopause Society, Dr. Polly Mackey. And we're going to be talking about cognition and hormone therapy. For many of you, you know Dr. Mackey is a professor of psychiatry, psychology, and obstetrics and gynecology, the director of women's mental health research, associate director of the Center for Research on Women and Gender, program director of the K-12 Birch Program, University of Illinois at Chicago, Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Shapiro. So many of our patients will notice cognition changes, brain fog, whatever they want to cause, call it, and they associate it with menopause. So tell us how we should be approaching this with our patients. It's such an important question because these cognitive symptoms are so common. 40 to 60% of women report changes in their cognition when they're at midlife and maybe beginning to transition through the menopause. And they want to know, is this menopause? Am I just getting old? Is it that I'm not sleeping as well? What's going on with me, right? So it turns out that there's actually very good evidence to validate women's experience of these cognitive complaints. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that there have been research studies that have shown that if you follow large groups of women as they transition through the menopause, they actually do show a change in their cognitive function longitudinally over time. And that change occurs in the perimenopause. That changes specifically on tests where we're trying to learn and remember information. Mm -hmm. So think about how germane that is to our patients' lives. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what we do in our daily lives. That's what we're doing right, right now. So, right, they, they report these changes and they're very troublesome. And when they're in the domain of memory, they worry, is this menopause? Is it aging? Is it maybe dementia? What's going on? Right. And that's that's the big concern. And, you know, word retrieval, name retrieval, some of these common things sort of just feeling foggy. I'm in a room. I'm not sure why I'm there. Does this mean you know, and dementia is really the big concern of so many women. So I, I think, you know, approaching the topic, even if they don't bring it up, would be so helpful. So the debate, the confusion to treat, to not treat hormone therapy, does it make it, does it, you know, better, worse? We have lots of evidence in newly hysterectomized or oophorectomized women, but what about the vast majority of women? That's right. And, and I'm glad you did bring up women who experience menopause earlier than expected because they've had surgery or some other factor that has led to their loss of ovarian function. Those women, unless there's a contraindication, right. are recommended to go on hormone therapy to support their cognitive function. And if that's sustained until the typical age at menopause, they don't show the cognitive impairment that other women do. So that's why societies like the Menopause Society have in their guidelines to go ahead and tell the patients with early menopause that this is going to help. But as you mentioned, the majority of women don't experience menopause surgically or they experience it naturally. So what does hormone therapy mean for them? So here's what we know. There is excellent high quality evidence that if you give a woman in the early postmenopause, meaning one to 10 years after her final menstrual period, a formulation of hormone therapy, and it doesn't matter if it's estradiol, mm -hmm. uh, transdermal, estradiol, oral, the progestins right. don't seem to matter, it's neutral. It has neutral effects on cognition, okay? So no benefit, no harm. And that's really encouraging news for women who get their hormone therapy prescription and maybe see a black box warning about right. dementia, right? So very reassuring. There's a qualification for, with these studies, Dr. Shapiro, and that is that they excluded women who have the very indication for hormone therapy. They excluded women with moderate to severe hot flashes. Now, that sounds kind of clinically uh, questionable, right? But scientifically, it asks a really important question that I think providers should be comfortable defending, if you will, to their patients, which is those patients who come in and say, I'm not having vasomotor symptoms, but I want to take hormone therapy because I heard it's good for my memory. Right. There's four clinical trials that show, no, that's not the case. But 
What we're missing is that randomized trial hormone therapy in women with moderate to severe hot flashes. Which, you know, is, is the reason that we're going to be treating women where most of us are not using this for prevention of disease in general, be it cardiovascular, right. be it dementia. So where does that stand for women who have an indication, intractable hot flashes and night sweats, they've tried everything, they finally come in and they want that reassurance that menopausal hormone therapy is the gold standard to treat them. What do we tell them about their brain health? Yes, it's, it's a terrific question. Here's what I would say. So we know that because hormone therapy is a gold standard treatment for vasomotor symptoms that women are going to find relief. So then we might ask the question, is there a link between vasomotor symptoms in cognition. Right. And that's where our work comes in. And we have shown a reliable association between the number of hot flashes a woman has, and we use these fancy monitors to measure them, and her objective performance on memory tests. So that the more frequent her hot flashes, the worse she's performing on a memory test. In addition, her brain circuitry uh, that underlies her ability to, to remember, that gets altered in a adverse manner. And there are more Alzheimer's disease biomarkers in her brain with the more hot flashes she has. So we have this link between vasomotor symptoms and brain function. What we don't have is the study that shows that if you treat them, brain function bounces back. However, I will say you don't need a PhD in cognitive neuroscience right. to know that if you've slept better the night before, your cognitive function is better, right? And our hot flashes- I'm going to interrupt you because I have to ask the question then, does it matter how you treat them? Because if you lower the hot flashes, be it through menopausal hormone therapy, be it through the new candy neuron antagonists, be it through Stella Ganglin, which we aren't using, but has good evidence, yep. is that what makes things better as opposed to hormones per se? That is the right question. Thank you for asking that. We published a randomized trial of a non-hormonal intervention, the Stella Ganglion blockade, right. because we wanted to avoid needing to interpret our results in light of any potential hormone effects. So we went the total non-hormonal route and we asked the right. question, if you treat those hot flashes, does memory bounce back? And it did. In other words, post-treatment with Stella Ganglion blockade, women had an improvement in their memory that was directly in proportion to their improvement in the vasomotor symptoms. And that was with the non-hormonal. So to answer your question more directly, it does not at this point seem to matter what you use to treat the hot flashes, uh, that whatever you use that effectively, effectively treats the objective hot flash, not my subjective hot flash, so the placebo effect will not help here. Right. That's a really important point. So even if a woman thinks some supplement that she's taking is taking care of her hot flashes, our work suggests that her real hot flashes, her her physiological- her, her fancy measurement box hot flashes. That's right. That's right. It's a hot flashes you don't even know that you're necessarily having, as well as those that you do know that you're having. Both of those contribute to the memory problems. So that's all to say our work suggests that it's probably quite important to effectively treat hot flashes in women. Right. So the question may not be, is it really the hormones that are improving memory as much as it is the treatment of these vasomotor symptoms? Right. That's right. So the question then is, is that since hormone therapy is the gold standard, or at the present time, for most women who don't have contraindications and all the caveats that we normally say for treating their hot flashes at night sweats, is there any downside to using that menopausal hormone therapy or do we lack the studies to know? In terms of using menopausal hormone therapy for the treatment of vasomotor symptoms and asking the question, will it have a negative or positive effect on cognition? The answer is very reassuring both for younger women, meaning within 10 years of the final menstrual period, the effects are neutral. Interestingly, they are also neutral for older women hmm. who may continue to go on their hot flashes provided, and this is a caveat, and I don't think a lot of people are doing this anymore, 
but conjugated equine estrogen plus medroxyprogesterone acetate does seem to have negative effects on cognition in older women. Other formulations, as shown by the ELITE trial, do not. But this so, is for women who already started and are continuing. We're not starting them at age 60. Nope. This is, this is the study. The ELITE study actually right. started women late. So it was the early and late intervention right. study. So, you know, this is common now. We have women who didn't want to take hormone therapy who may be really suffering. You know, those women um, had neutral effects as well in the elite trial. So that was reassuring news. Again, it, it, it doesn't apply to conjugated equine estrogen plus medroxyprogesterone acetate, but it does, it was safe in elite, which is reassuring. Very reassuring. So the question then is for practitioners, how do you address your patient's concern, given the fact that we have this big black box warning there that yes. you know, we have a conversation, they go home, they pull out the papers, they read the black box warning and it's... Yes. So how yeah. proactively have that conversation? Yeah, I, I actually believe that the warning for conjugated equine estrogen and medroxyprogesterone acetate in the older postmenopausal women reflects reality. I do think that formulation is, is probably toxic to some women. We actually think that effect was driven by women who were already showing signs of cognitive impairment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's one thing they can say. But I think the best um, evidence to bring up is to say they have tried other formulations, including the, the transdermal formulation right. I'm providing you or the oral uh, formulation that I'm providing you. And they have found that it has neutral effects. And if I'm treating your hot flashes, which should be probably the only reason you're using the hormone therapy, right? Um, if you're treating the hot flashes, you may very well experience some benefits. Unfortunately, we don't have the data to directly prove that, but there does appear to be a link between hot flashes and memory problems. So, um, you know, at, at best it's neutral, but you may have some benefit. And I, I think that's so important to be able to sort of begin to unlink the hot flashes themselves, the objective hot flashes and the impact on memory, as opposed right. to, oh, it links into menopausal hormone therapy and that's the link. Whereas what right. you're saying is so clear that the hot flashes and night sweats themselves are yes. such an important indicator of the memory changes that women see. Yes. But I would like to add one caveat to our knowledge base in this for the, for the provider. What I've um, what I'm reflecting right now is the use of hormone therapy in the postmenopause. Right. What's interesting about the cognitive changes is that they begin in the perimenopause. Okay. So a lot of women want answers there, and this is a data free space. Does hormone therapy or oral contraceptive use in the perimenopause benefit cognition? It's almost the right question because the window of opportunity, if you will, for right. cognition appears to be the perimenopause. This too is a data-free space. We do not have the randomized trials to answer that particular question. But I will say that there's beautiful data showing that those fluctuations in estradiol that occur in the perimenopause, mm -hmm. strongly associated with mood in women, some women, um, are particularly sensitive to those. So it stands to reason in my mind that perhaps doing something to take away those fluctuations in estradiol, be an oral contraceptive, via transdermal with you know some kind of IUD, that too could potentially benefit the brain because the female brain doesn't like these fluctuations in sex steroid hormones. Now that's a theoretical position, but I say that because we don't want to uncritically generalize what we see in the postmenopause randomized right. trial day to the perimenopause and say uncritically that can't apply because we do know that the hormonal state of the perimenopause is different. It's one of fluctuations, right, in, as well as declines. And so, you know, treat the symptoms you know, treat the vasomotor symptoms, but there may be that occasional woman who, like the woman who gets postpartum depression, is very sensitive in terms of her brain health, her cognitive right. health, her mood to that fluctuation, even in the absence 
of the vasomotor symptoms. Again, this is a theoretical space, but we have to practice within this space. Right. You don't have randomized trials. So I share that caveat with the audience just to say, we don't yet know, but theoretically it may be a different story in the perimenopause. Early days, but you're Day. right. We are practicing within this sphere and at least walking away with the information that the hot flashes and ice sweats themselves are so important for the memory changes and that the indication to treat for hot flashes and night sweats is still there. And the neutrality of early intervention is also reassuring. Do no harm. Right. Thank right, you so exactly. much for joining us today. And I am sure that I will be doing this every year with you as newer information evolves. Thank you, Dr. Shapiro. Bye for now, Dr. Mackey.